Welcome to our second module, Learning in 4-H. As a non-formal education program, the philosophy of how we teach over 30 life skills is important to understand as a volunteer. You don't need to be a teacher. Remember, this is a non-formal program, but you need to facilitate learning. Madam Rhonda will explain our hands-on learning philosophy. In fact, that's the way young people learn in 4-H, through hands-on, through experience, and through exploration. The 4-H model might be to learn by doing, but we don't learn anything just by doing. Doing it, experiential learning means more. And that's what this unit is about, experiential learning and how it applies to our role as a volunteer in 4-H. Let's hear from Matt and Rhonda. Welcome to the Volunteer Leader Orientation Series. This is Module 2 titled Learning in 4-H. In this module, we will present a framework theory for positive youth development, essential elements, how and where 4-H teaches life skills, and some opportunities in 4-H beyond the club. All 4-H educational programs are based on three national mission mandates, science, citizenship, and healthy living. As a volunteer, you have the opportunity to explore your interest under these broad program areas at the same time you are educating youth. Any educational program you provide should include the basic needs of youth. These basic needs are called the four essential elements of positive youth development. They are belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity. Youth must feel they belong to a group and are connected to peers and adults in that group. Most importantly, they must feel safe while participating in our activities. To achieve mastery, youth need to explore ideas and activities and learn skills in a non-threatening atmosphere. Independence is met when youth make decisions that affect their lives. Through generosity or helping others, youth connect to their communities and give back to others. Learning is the essential core of any 4-H program. Some examples of life skills gained in 4-H educational programs are learning to effectively communicate with others and making new friends, goal setting and self-confidence, critical thinking and problem solving, and learning to work as a team and giving time to help others. Our shared goal is for young people to have opportunities to follow their passions and direct their own learning. You learn in different ways and in different places. As a volunteer, you play an important role in guiding those learning opportunities. Youth learn most successfully when they use and connect new knowledge to other life experiences. This learn by doing approach to teaching called experiential learning. This method can be broken down into three easy to follow steps. Do, reflect, and apply. The first step to doing an activity or an experience. The second step is reflecting on the experience, including sharing, and processing what happened. The third step is applying what was learned to new or different life situations. This complete process allows youth to learn new skills, cultivate new attitudes, and develop new ways of thinking. By incorporating experiential learning into the 4-H program, we can ensure that learning is self-directed and that young people can evaluate their own learning through processing and applying what they have learned. Learn by Doing sums up the educational philosophy of the 4-H program. Young people learn best when they are involved in their learning. We've already learned about experiential learning in Module 2. We already know that of the four essential elements of youth development, belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity, are present in your programs, then we are able to create opportunities that meet young people's needs and build life skills such as leadership, self-esteem, communication, and planning. Before we examine the 4-H program delivery methods, let's look at high and low context youth development experiences and how these concepts are related to program delivery. Look at this graphic. If the major foundation of our program is life skills, it involves project learning, education or content, to your left, and an interrelated environment, essential elements or context, to your right. Maximizing these two factors is the amount of time dedicated to them in a program where adults and youth interact. This slide illustrates how content and context are related to delivery methods. Clubs, camps, after school, and school enrichment. The best learning environment for youth happens when a high content delivery overlaps with a high context experience. 
4-H Club emerges as the best place for this to happen. What makes up a club? Clubs can be project or community. It meets regularly. It includes at least five members from three or more families. A club conducts at least six club meetings per year. It includes boys and girls ages 8 through 18 years old as of September 1st. It includes screened and trained adult volunteers, youth and adult partnerships, and officers. Many states have club options for younger youth. A Cloverbud member, age 5 to 7, or kindergarten through third grade, should only be involved in cooperative learning and age-appropriate activities, such as non-competitive events. The overall purpose of the 4-H Clover Buds program is to foster the development of life skills that are essential for the cognitive, social, emotional, and physical maturation of kindergarten through third graders. Children in these grades are a distinct audience for 4-H with unique learning characteristics and developmental needs that are different from older children and youth. It is neither the intent nor the objective of the 4-H Clover Buds program to duplicate the 4-H member experiences that are designed for older youth nor create a mini 4-H concept. While the 4-H Clover Buds program is a part of the overall 4-H youth development program and the 4-H Clover Bud members are recognized as a 4-H members for the purposes of enrollment, they are considered to be in a special membership category with regard to program and policy. We have talked mostly about clubs because that's where the greatest impact is made with youth. Remember high content and high context over a long period of time. There are other methods of delivery in 4-H and after-school clubs are just as important. 4-H after-school programs are a curriculum of project work. 4-H does not generally provide youth care services. This curriculum may be delivered by a 4-H program staff for 45 minutes once a week and over six or more visits. There are many variations of how this can be implemented. Many of our programs are blended with existing after-school programs at schools, YMCAs, military based youth centers, and others. 4-H staff can also train volunteers or youth care staff to deliver 4-H curriculum. This is also a very effective way to engage 4-H within existing programs. Here in Florida, we offer a few school enrichment projects for teachers. The two most popular are public speaking and embryology. The public speaking program is for grades 4, 5, and 6 and sponsored by Tropicana Incorporated and 4-H since 1969. It is general a part of the school language arts program. Embry embryology is a science program for elementary or middle schools. Teachers are trained to use the equipment and materials to hatch quail, chicks, or ducks. School gardens can also be a project through 4-H with the help of our Extension Master Gardeners. We also have a, have a new curriculum as a partnership with the UF School of Engineering called Steps in Achieving Viable Energy. Most of the school enrichment projects, 4-H staff train volunteers to present or the teachers may register their class as a 4-H group to use in their classes. Another method used in 4-H is camping, both day camps and residential camps. Florida 4-H has three camp facilities they own and one that is leased. Over 3,000 youth attend 4-H summer camps. Staffed are trained and certified. Counties can camp as a group or join with two or three other counties in a cluster. Or youth can also attend specialty camps for military youth, shooting sports, science, and others. Annual evaluation of our camping program supports the positive impact that youth development is occurring. You may have noticed reference to 4-H projects throughout our discussion of 4-H. A 4-H project is an opportunity for a member to gain knowledge and skills in a certain area of interest. It includes a planned sequence of activities that are age-appropriate and research-based. Members set goals annually of what they want to learn and accomplish. The project is the whole experience, it's not just exhibiting it at the fair or the record book. It requires a plan work in an area of interest supported with research-based sequence project materials that are 4-H approved curriculum. They're guided by a screened volunteer, established goals, a minimum of six hours of work in the project. Youth need to share their knowledge. They complete an annual report book with project book or project sheets as a self-evaluation and record keeping and peer competition, which is optional. There are more than 30 life skills young people can learn through 4-H involvement and project work. General skill areas of thinking, managing, relating, caring, giving, 
working, being, and living. And the specific skill in these areas are goal setting, critical thinking, healthy lifestyle choice, teamwork, public speaking, and empathy are just a few. The positive development of youth, comprehensive findings from the 4-H study of positive youth development as a longitudinal study that began in 2002 and was repeated annually for eight years, surveying more than 7,000 adolescents from diverse backgrounds across 42 U.S. states. Highly regarded as the first ever research project of its kind, the study defined and measured positive youth development. Compared to their peers, the report shows that youth involved in 4-H programs excel in several areas. 4-Hers are about four times more likely to make contributions to their communities in grades 7 through 12. They're two times more likely to be civically active in grades 8 through 12. They're two times more likely to make healthier choices in grade 7. Two times more likely to participate in science, engineering, and computer technology programs during out-of-school time for grades 10 through 12. And 4-H girls are two times more likely in grades 10 and nearly three times more likely in grades 12 to take part in science programs compared to girls in other out-of-school time activities. Throughout the year, which is, which is September 1st through August 31st, many opportunities are available for youth at the county, district, state, national, and international levels. As a 4-H member and volunteer grow with the program, they are encouraged to grow their involvement in the program. Counties offer fairs, county events for demonstrating their project, and camping. Then there are district events, horse shows, dog shows, teen youth councils, and state leadership training and events such as state legislature in Tallahassee, a week at 4-H University at the University of Florida for those 14 years and older. Yes, there is a lot going on in Florida 4-H. This concludes our module on learning in 4-H. Be sure to visit the links provided on the webpage. Thank you for your time. Next up in our orientation series is my volunteer role.